You know, we've been helping a lot of different people move over to Toronto in recent weeks and we've noticed that different categories of people are looking for completely different things and looking for completely different neighborhoods. For example, a family and a retiree and a young professional would probably not want to be in the same neighborhood because they're looking for completely different things. Young professionals don't care about top rated schools and family friendly neighborhoods, while families clearly do. But in this video, we want to focus on young professionals or single professionals that are moving to Toronto and we're going to highlight the top three neighborhoods for young professionals to live in Toronto. These are the neighborhoods with the best restaurants, best event venues, the best sporting venues, and of course, other young professionals. We're going to shortly jump into my computer, go into my Google Maps, and I'm going to give you a detailed guide through these neighborhoods and showcase some of the best things they have to offer. But before we get to that, if this is your first time to the channel and you'd like to know everything there is to know about living in Toronto and the surrounding area, then be sure to subscribe so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Toronto. My name is Philip Cotlier. I'm a local real estate broker and I get calls, texts and emails every day from people just like you. So if that's you, if you're planning on moving across the country, across the world or just across town, whether it's in eight days or 80 days, just give me a call. I'm happy to help you make your move everything you want it to be. Now, without further ado, let's jump into my computer and I'll give you a detailed Google Maps tour of the top three neighborhoods for young professionals in Toronto. Now why we're making this video is because Toronto is huge and very sprawled out and if you're moving to the city for the first time it could be a little bit daunting picking a place to live especially if you're a young professional you definitely want to be amongst other young professionals places to go out places to have a good time maybe get a drink after work and uh, that's what this video is for we're gonna highlight these neighborhoods for you show you exactly where they are and exactly what to expect so the first one we're gonna start with is right in the core of the city it's called King West it's called King West because it's west of Young Street. Young Street is the largest street here in Toronto. It cuts the whole city right in half. So King West is west of this uh, major street and it contains a lot of the most important, uh, most important things to do here in Toronto. So let's take a quick look. Young Street is right over here and we have King Street right over here. And the neighborhood kind of spans from Young Street north to uh, around uh, Dundas, around Queen, and then it kind of wraps back around. So quickly you can see we have the Hockey Hall of Fame, a big tourist destination. We have the CN Tower right over here. We have the Ripley's Aquarium right over here. We have the Scotia Bank Arena here where the Raptors play. Uh, just to name a couple of things, you already see some of the biggest tourist destinations right within walking distance, all in King West. Now, a lot of young professionals like this neighborhood as well because you have Bay Street right over here. Bay Street is the equivalent of uh, Wall Street in New York. A lot of the financial firms have offices here on Bay Street. And then you have the re remaining remainder portrait of the financial district as well as right in this region. So King West is next door to the financial district, allows you to easily walk to work um, and kind of walk to everything else within your life. You do not need a car if you live in this neighborhood. Um, I used to live here myself. I did have a car and it caused some other issues, which we'll talk on, touch on a little bit uh, later in the video. Um, but you have an idea of where the neighborhood is in the, in the city. It's right over here. And now let's take a, a deeper dive uh, into what this neighborhood is all about. So if we go a little bit closer, we can see transportation wise, we have two major subway stations over here. Uh, St. Andrews is the one I would used to use and the subway kind of loops down university and goes up this way. So anything west of, of here, no subway, you're going to be on streetcars which can be a little bit challenging at times if there's traffic and there's a lot of congestion on the streets. Streetcars are delayed because they're kind of combating, um, combating for the roads with cars. Also, there's a lot of construction in Toronto. Right now, we're building a new subway line along Queen Street right over here. There's actually going to be a subway stop right here at Queen and Bathurst. So this uh, this region has a lot of construction. Something else you should know if you're considering moving down here. Um, subway is pretty important piece to the puzzle because it still operates. It's not as affected by construction, but if you're planning on driving, uh, it's gonna be a little hairy. Now, I used to live in this pocket for a long time when I first moved downtown, and I lived um, right over here. And, um, this pocket was great. I loved living here. Everything was right in my footsteps. You had all the restaurants, all the shops. But the one challenge is I was driving and my driving schedule depended on the sports teams. If the 
Toronto Blue Jays were playing or the Raptors were playing and there was a game happening that night, it was really hard to leave my condo because uh, outside my door was just bumper to bumper traffic when the game started and the game ended. Uh, so that's something I didn't realize when I first moved in here is that your living schedule is really dependent on the game schedule of these of these popular teams here in Toronto. Sometimes I wouldn't come home uh, because I knew getting into my condo would take me, you know, a very long time. Um, so keep that in mind if you're planning on driving in this neighborhood, not so easy. Um, now a little bit uh, more info on this neighborhood. If you were living here right now, you would be immersed in the Toronto International Film Festival, which takes over King West for two weeks in September. A-list celebrities from all over the world flocked here. The billboards changed to movie posters. The whole neighborhood is transformed for these two weeks. It's a pretty major event on the international movie calendar. Uh, it's a great place to just hang out, see some stars. Uh, the only downside is all the restaurants are booked, all the hotels are booked, and the neighborhood becomes really busy. But it's the hustle and bustle is, is pretty amazing. Um, so that's one great attraction that happens here at once a year. Outside of that, we have uh, lots of awesome restaurants. Here's a few that I like. Pai is an amazing Thai place, some really authentic, authentic Thai food. And I've been to Thailand. This is the closest to a, a Thai experience that I've uh, found here in Toronto. They're a very popular place. Often there's lineups outside the door. And if you're visiting, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's uh, not to be missed. Uh, and then Biblos, another one of my favorite places, very Med Middle Eastern, Mediterranean type of food, tapas style, meze style food. You can see some pictures here. Really, uh, really delicious dishes. More on the kind of pricey, um, pricey portions, uh, pricey plates as well. So keep that in mind. It's more like a date night, dinner night place. And then um, along King Street over, over here, west of Spadina, is where a lot of the bars and restaurants and um, nightclubs are located right over here. So if you want to go out, there's a few great spots to check out. On a Saturday or Friday night, this street is bumping. Lots of people here. Uh, really the place to be in the city of Toronto. A um, few places here that pop up. Oretta, beautiful Italian restaurant, amazing design. Um, you know, the Michelin Guide recently came to Toronto and um, we have Michelin ranked restaurants finally. We've been waiting for this for a long time. So there's a lot of hype over these restaurants. If you want to kind of have a short list of where to go, where to eat, that's a great place to start is just the Michelin Guide or just keep watching this video. I'll show you more great places that I like to frequent. Uh, here's Gusto 101, really nice Italian restaurants, uh, two floors, really good patio, great food. Uh, often there's lots of lineups in this one also. Um, you can tell I'm a foodie because I just eat my way through Toronto all the time. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a really great uh, kind of supper club slash nightclub called Mademoiselle. I'll show you what that place looks like quickly. It recently opened, it went through a huge renovation. This uh, used to be um, an adult entertainment club uh, and now they transformed it into more of a supper club with uh, kind of dinner, then it transforms to a club with live music or just DJ spinning. But uh, it's a great place for a party and they have some amazing food as well. So uh, you have a snapshot of what life here is in King West. Oh, I also want to mention The Well, uh, another new development that opened here. This is a commercial, residential and retail development. It's an outdoor shopping mall, it takes inspiration from some European shops. Um, it's not completely open yet. There's uh, maybe half of the places are vacant, but it already is a, quite a destination. It's, it's a beautiful design and beautiful architecture that they put into this place. Uh, you can just see some of the photos here as I'm cycling through. Um, so my, a place you want to check out by the time you come here, it hopefully will have a lot more uh, of the stores filled up. Um, and then what else? Roy Thompson Hall over here, another big destination. The Toronto Symphony Orchestra is based in the Roy Thompson Hall. So if you want to catch a show, it's a great place to, to go over here. Um, the Art Gallery of Ontario is right over here. Four Seasons Performing Arts Centre is over here. Um, so a lot of the Toronto nightlife scene takes place in King West. Um, also the, the Theatre District is right, uh, right over here beside uh, beside Roy Thompson Hall, this is a really big theater, the Princess of Wales Theater, a lot of performances take place here. 
Okay, so that kind of gives you a sense. Now this area is very much a high-rise condominium area. Towers 40 to 60 stories are not uncommon to be seen here. Um, so keep that in mind as well. If um, you want to be moving here, that's what you're going to be most likely living in is a high-rise tower. Let's see if I can give us a different view on it. Oh, there you go. You can see some of the high-rise towers that are over King West. Oh, there's a beautiful little art installment. Now, that gives you a sense of King West. We're going to switch over to our next neighborhood and have a look at what life is like over there. Now, if the hustle and bustle of King West is a little bit too much for you, the second neighborhood on our list may be just right. And the second neighborhood is called West Queen West. It's called that because it's um, west of Young, of course. Also, it's west of King West. Let's take a look at uh, where it is in relationship to the previous neighborhood. Here is the outline over here. Let's kind of enhance that a little bit. This is West Queen West, right over here. And then King West, where we were just looking, is right in this pocket. All right, so a little bit further west of Young Street, uh, a little bit kind of on the fringes of the downtown core. It's also a little bit uh, quieter and a little bit less dense. You don't get high rise 50, 50, 60 story buildings here. You get uh, 10, 15 story buildings at max height. Um, but then transit wise, you know, the subway is a bit further of a walk. That's another uh, downside. We have a subway station right here on University, another one right over here. And then um, there is a 24 hour streetcar along Queen Street. That would be your best mode of transportation, um, other than walking, of course. But um, all that aside, Queen West has a lot, lot going for it. Um, it has been voted by Vogue magazine as one of the coolest neighborhoods in the world, number two. It came in uh, right after a neighborhood in Tokyo. Um, and it has this distinction because it's quite the destination. There's a lot of uh, local um, Toronto brands that have clothing stores here. There's a lot of uh, amazing breweries, restaurants, bars, uh, of ever evolving culinary scene. And a lot of uh, festivals, uh, events, and performances take place in Queen West. Um, let's take a look at a few of the neighborhood hotspots and give you a sense of um, where you would start your tour if you did come down to Queen West for, for a visit. I would recommend starting right over here, uh, right kind of Beaconville Ave and Queen West. There's a place called the Drake Hotel, which is a one-of-a-kind hotel, event venue, bar, and restaurant. It's been around for a long time, way before Drake the music Drake was around. This uh, is the original Drake. Um, let's take a look at what it looks like from the ground level. Here is the Drake Hotel right in front of us and you can get a sense of uh, what Queen Street West looks like over here. These kind of old-school Victorian Edwardian homes that have been converted into shops. This is a Toronto streetcar of course if you haven't seen one you'll see a lot when you come down here. Here's some of those mid-rise boutique buildings that I spoke about. This is a new uh, pilot program that uh, takes place in the summer where the street is reclaimed for patios of different restaurants and they're kind of built into the streetscape. Um, it is quite a popular program. Here is, uh, here's a great restaurant that used to be a church. You can still see the cross right up here. Uh, and it's kind of like a bar restaurant now that um, gets quite busy in the evenings. Um, so that's just a quick sample of the streetscape, just so you have an idea of what to look out for. This is a great pastry place called Forno Cultura. Um, but um, yeah, the other kind of main draw in Queen West is Trinity Bellwoods Park, an excellent park with uh, outdoor dog walking area. Um, a lot of people come here to have uh, beer in the summer. Um, here's the kind of the main entrance gate. You know, there's not too many. Uh, parks in downtown Toronto. There's a lot of parks on kind of the the u-shaped circle around the downtown core But right in the core there's there's not too many so having um, Trinity Bellwoods Park at your footsteps is, is very nice thing to have now if you're going for a night out um, In Queen West, you're most likely going to be going on Ossington this street right over here this strip between Dundas and Queen West is the most kind of happening street uh, all kinds of different establishments um, exist here. Now, qu quick side story. I recently went out uh, on a date with my wife and we had no idea what was happening on Ossington. We came down here, we turned the corner, the whole street was shut down. It was an outdoor party 
no cars, different vendors, different venues, different sounds, and it was uh, 12 at night, but it was fully rammed. I've never seen anything like it. It's called OzFest. I'm gonna put up a link here in this video so you get a sense of uh, what uh, an outdoor party is here on Ossington. Uh, let's take a look at some of my favorite places. Bang Bang Ice Cream. I do have a bit of a sweet tooth. This would be top of my list. They make their own in-house ice cream. Some amazing, amazing flavors. And you can get ice cream in one of these waffle cones. They also have ice cream in cookies, which uh, is really nice. Let's see if we can find a picture. There we go. Ice cream in a cookie. This place always has a lineup. If you ever see it without a lineup, quickly go and get something for yourself. <laughs> uh, there's that brewery I told you about, Bellwoods Brewery, very popular brewery, they have some great beer, it's also a really nice uh, venue itself, it gets quite busy, a great place for the community to get together, uh, kind of two floors, you can see how busy it gets at the times, that's a place to check out, if you want um, really good Greek food, there's a place called uh, Mama Kas, right on one of these corners, not over here, I think it's a bit lower down. There we go, Mama Kass, really good Greek restaurant, really authentic food, fresh produce, fresh flavors, always in demand, always busy. And then every a lot of things change here, like um, this Union Chicken has been around for a little while, great restaurant. This full place has been around for, for a while, a nice Vietnamese restaurant, um, but a lot of um, newcomers come here that you may want to check out. Uh, this Paris Paris place I haven't been to, but I've heard good things. Um, so the culinary scene, lots to do. Lifestyle wise, you're looking at um, more of these boutique buildings. I'll show you one that I really like called The Plant, which is a really nice tower. It's located here on Dover Court in Sudbury. If you're looking for a nice boutique building to live in, that's relatively new. A building like this it was built around four years ago, less than 100 units, um, very kind of uh, loft style, exposed concrete ceilings, gas stove tops, um, and you still have that kind of new construction feel to it. And then there's some, some slightly older buildings, but still in great condition. These are also in high demand. Um, but you can see kind of the old Toronto vibe is present here, and then there's some townhomes as well. That's the other piece. This neighborhood does actually have houses. Uh, so if you're looking for more of a larger accommodation, you can look for a townhouse or a more kind of traditional detached house. Uh, many of them have been renovated. Um, so this is something that differentiates Queen West from King West. As in King West, uh, houses are not a normal thing to live in. It's really high rise, some mid rise, mostly high rise. But in Queen West, houses are possible. Mid rises are more common. Um, and then, you know, everything in the middle, apartment buildings um, are also possible over here. So that's a quick snapshot of West Queen West. Great place to live if you're a young professional. Uh, lots to do and it's still within uh, reach of the financial district and a lot of employment opportunities here in Toronto. Let's head to our third and final neighborhood for young professionals in the city of Toronto. We've covered two downtown neighborhoods, King West and Queen West. Next, we're gonna head Midtown and cover a neighborhood that's quite popular in the middle of the city. So we're gonna head a little bit further north to a neighborhood that's called Young and Eglinton, or sometimes I call it Young and Eligible as a quick, a cute little side name. Now, uh, Young and Eglinton is right over here in, in Midtown Toronto. Um, in town Toronto is quite a big block, it encompasses a few different neighborhoods. But Young and Eglinton itself has gone through a pretty significant change over the last 10 years. It's really unrecognizable from how I remember it. Now, let's uh, go on the ground and take a quick look at what the neighborhood looks like. I think we arrived in the wrong part of town, but you get the part of the idea. Let's go somewhere else. Over here, we can take a look as well. Um, and you can see a lot of tall towers. Several of the, several of these are brand new. This condo right here is called the uh, E Condos. Recently built with a huge TD Bank at the base. This tower over here is brand new as well. And then there, are, all these buildings are within the last 10 years. So it's gone through quite a drastic facelift. And uh, the intersection itself is being upgraded significantly because we do have the subway line that runs uh, north and south along Young Street right over here but uh, right now we've been spending the last 15 years building another another subway line along Eglinton 
which uh, would make Young Eglinton uh, interchange station with two kind of intersecting subway lines uh, and really a hub of activity. You'll also be able to get to the airport on this uh, Eglin Eglinton Avenue subway line. If you go west on Eglinton, you'll be able to get to the airport. Now this subway is not quite open. They're in the last stages of testing it, but it soon will be and the neighborhood will become even, even a little bit busier. Um, but a lot of people like to live here because there's a lot of different uh, jobs. A lot of different companies have their home base over here right at Young and Eglinton. There's also uh, a few other job hubs close by. Um, here we have Young and Eglinton right here. We have North York with Young and Shepherd right here, a pretty big job hub. And then there's some, well, a few firms that hold offices at York Mills and Young. Um, so you can kind of quickly get around because of the subway and obviously go downtown as well. But if somebody prefers a midtown location, um, Young and Eglinton is a great spot for that. It's also a lot easier to drive out of the downtown core. If you need to drive for your work, uh, you want to kind of cross the city, um, leaving from downtown can be challenging, at least for the next 10 years while um, the new subway downtown is being developed. But from Young and Eglinton, you have, uh, as you can see, access to a lot more of the city's uh, highway infrastructure. You can get onto the 401 a bit easier right over here. And this is the Don Valley Parkway, the other kind of highway, which Eglinton intersects right, right here. So if um, a car is important to you, I would definitely consider not being right downtown. And Eglinton and Young is a great option, Young and Shepherd, also potentially a competing option, but I like Young and Eglinton better. So what makes this a great neighborhood for young professionals lots of awesome places to get go out at night lots of places to eat we have uh, la vecchia excellent italian restaurant very popular place great eclectic decor great food everything you can imagine oh that's cool never saw that room that's one place we have um, grazi staple here it's been around for ages a place i've gone to for a very long time fresh pasta fresh italian food cannot go wrong with a place like this try the penne alla vodka when you go there you will not be disappointed uh, copacabana great brazilian steakhouse cool eclectic design um, great location great service can't go wrong with that place uh, what else we have um, gabby's if you're looking for more like a pub style spot with uh, beer and wings and game night that's the place you're gonna go um what else? Oretta, we've seen this downtown. They also opened up a place at Young and Eglinton. This is a great place. Nice place to check out. And this is actually in the base of a condominium that's uh, quite a nice condominium called Art House. Let's take a quick look at it over here. Or it's called Art Shop, not Art House. There used to be a very popular furniture store at the location of this condo called Art Shop. And when they kind of tore down the, the furniture store to build the condo, they kept the name. Uh, but it's a nice condo. It has some really cool designs inside, worth checking out, not too tall. Um, pretty big footprints. So that's one option I would consider if you want to live like right at the intersection. This big building over here, which is called E-Condos, is a great place to consider. This is actually a swimming pool. This red thing in the middle which is kind of kind of interesting. That is pretty much a quick overview of Young and Eglinton uh, neighborhood. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you're a young professional considering a move to Toronto. And that kind of wraps us up on this neighborhood and the other three. And that's a wrap on our guide to the top three neighborhoods for young professionals moving to the city of Toronto. Now, what did you guys think? Was there a neighborhood that stood out for you? We'd love to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Moving forward, we're putting out a video a week about everything to do with life in Toronto, including neighborhood guides, property tours, and real estate stats. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified as soon as a new video is released. That's it for today. We'll see you guys on the next one.